Well, hello, folks, and welcome to Son of Dell's Christmas Vlogmas Day 7. Uh, coming up today, I've got the Advent Calendars, Nightmare Before Christmas, and Harry Potter, and also the Doggy Advent Calendar, all obviously Day 7s. Um, a few bizarre photographs and stories, and basically all I'll be talking about today is today, because it's been a hell of a day, and so much has happened in one day. It's, um, it's quite incredible, actually. And I'll be reading a special poem out um, called, just basically called Marjorie Pinches. And I'll be reading that out later. And it's a tribute to my auntie, who sadly passed away this morning. Um, so, yeah, all that's to come. Coming up, the advent calendars. Happy tree. Oh, you're waiting. You're ready Wait. for a treat. You're waiting. Let's find it. Where is it today? Where is it? Aha. Oh, where's that go? Where's that go? Cheers! Oh, hang on. Nice, I think, than it used to be. There you go. You get got it. What we got? Oh, it's the little bonies! Uh -huh. <laughs> that thanks. You took me hand with it. Save one for your mum gave you at the end, eh? You might not slobbering on my fingers. You didn't want your fingers anyway, did you? No, I didn't, no. <sighs> Stay, wait, wait. Me. No, it's for the dog. <laughs> Very funny. Who's <laughs> this one, Jess? Where's this one? Where's this one? Where's this one? Can you sit? Jess, Jess, what's this? No, sit. Sit. Come here. Come here. Sit. Sit. Good girl. Do this one. Pardon? Good girl. Have paw. Paw. Good girl. Other one. Good girl. Good girl. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's it. Good girl. Wow, I haven't got anything else. Hold on, look. Hold on. Hold on. That's it. She says I'm going for a drink. That's it. That's it. You're done. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, folks, and welcome to day seven of the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas mini Funko Pop calendar. Yesterday we had. Jack in Nightgown, was it? Jack in the Nightgown yesterday, I think it was. And today. Ah, door seven. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Let's see who we've got today. Says it. Right, who have we got? I have no idea. <laughs> Looks like someone's out of Sesame Street. Do you want to enlighten me, Dad? No idea. Right, that's okay. So we've got no idea. If you know, way to go. So that is in door seven of the Nightmare Before Christmas advent calendar, and we have no idea who he is. So folks, in door 7 of the Nightmare Before Christmas calendar, we had no idea. I will actually write on who it is, because I'll find out before I do the vlog. Yesterday was Severus Snape in the Harry Potter one, and he was quite obvious. So this one might be a bit tricky, you never know. Oof, that was a bit of a beast. For some reason it looks like Obi-Wan Kenobi, but he doesn't. <laughs> Come on, Deb, fire away. 
Who is that? <laughs> no idea, right? <laughs> We've done well today, we've had two calendars and we've no idea who any of them are. It might be um, the guy who was locked up in prison. Oh, the prisoner of Azkaban? No, it's um, the oh. one, oh, what was his name? Is it Salazar? Oh, Salazar. Right, we, we're having a little tiny guess at Salazar. I don't know whether Deb's got the picture. I think she has. Yeah. So that's door seven of the Harry Potter mini pocket pop calendar. And we have no idea, but it's a possibility it could be Salazar. I don't think it is. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's, it's been a really, really strange day. Um, when I got up this morning, uh, the first thing I saw was a message on my mobile phone, and it was to tell me that my auntie had passed away from COVID-19 in hospital. Um, she was a lovely woman, my auntie Marge was. I haven't seen her much in the last 20-odd years, but I do remember when I was growing up, um, she was part of a very, very close family, you know, with kids, um, and her and her husband, my Uncle Peter, who sadly passed away um, a fair few years ago now. Um, I think it was nine, I'm not quite sure. Uh, and yeah, so that was the first thing I got. <clears throat> um, and that really set the tone for the day. Um, the second thing, oh, sorry, I'll be reading a poem out at the end of this vlog uh, in memory of my Auntie Marge. So that's to uh, come later. I'm not going to do that now, I'm going to do it at the end. So the second thing that happened was we um, were having an Asda delivery, as I told you, which was due today. Uh, sorry, a Tesco delivery, which was due today, and that's come. But we, had, we got an Asda delivery coming tomorrow, and I got an email this morning to say that three of the items were out of stock. Now, you would think that the items that would be out of stock would be like limited things, things that you can't get hold of. But when I tell you, they were actually apples, bananas, and sultanas. Um, it's quite strange that you can put things in your basket at online shopping and then be there. but And you order them and you sort out the payment for them. But then a day before you're due to get them, they suddenly tell you they're out of stock. I find this a bit disconcerting and I think it's a bit strange that they do it. Um, I can understand, you know, with things that are, they weren't expecting a sell on, you know, like, I don't know, limited edition chocolates for Christmas or things like that. So that was the second thing. And the third thing was... I went on to uh, my email this morning uh, to check my emails and uh, last night it's about, I told you, we have a milk delivery <clears throat> at round about um, 12 o'clock last night, so basically this morning. Anyway, it came and I noticed when it was delivered that the cheese that was delivered, we normally have real Lancashire, which is a mild cheddar and we ended up with mature cheddar and the funny thing was about 10 o'clock this morning, there was a big thunk and we went to the door and posted through the door with a post-it note on it, said, we're really sorry, we delivered you the wrong cheese yesterday. This is your cheese. Can you please leave the other one out Wednesday morning, Wednesday night? And I pulled back the label and what was on? But the mature cheddar again. So we've got two blocks of this mature cheddar. So I sent them an email saying, thanks so much for the replacement cheese. However, the cheese you've sent me, is the exact same cheese that you posted through the letterbox. It isn't our cheese at all. It's totally different. And he sent me one back saying that apparently the guy who does his deliveries actually messed up every block of cheese last night in his deliveries. He managed to deliver every single one wrong, which takes a lot of doing, really. To get a couple wrong, yeah, fair enough, but he actually got every single one wrong. 
So anyway, that was that. So moved on from there. I've not been feeling too bad today. I've had a bit of a bad head, but nothing major. So I was sitting in the living room and we knew we had a delivery the other day of four 80 litre plastic tubs because we needed them to put DVDs and Blu-rays in to store. And uh, we took them out of the box today because we we're putting the Blu-rays away so we could get the Christmas DVDs and Blu-rays ready to watch. And we noticed that one of the lids wasn't just split. It was almost torn to shreds. It was, all, it was, it was horrendous, honestly. You, I'll show you the pictures now here coming up. As you can see, these are the pictures of the boxes. And you can see the damage on the box. You can see how badly damaged it is. Um, and I've been in touch with them and told them. So I'm waiting for them to get back to me now. Uh, I actually rang them. I tried to ring them because there was a number on the order form thing. So I tried to ring them and it said I could be waiting up to an hour. But the funny thing was, it said, uh, please hold. You could be waiting up to an hour. One second later, beep, it disconnected me. And I thought, well, what's the point of telling me to hold? Because I had to listen to about five minutes of spiel about old COVID-19 and how, how this is happening and that's happening and we've got limited this, limited that and don't worry if your order hasn't arrived. And then by the time I got to the end of that and he told me to hang on the line, bang, just disconnected me. So I weren't best happy about that. Anyway, this was about, uh, about three o'clock, quarter past three or something. So I came through and I messaged them to tell them. And when I went back through, me and Deb were sitting there. And uh, we started sorting out some more Blu-rays and DVDs and also sorting out some Christmas decks. And we're sitting there sorting stuff out. And I said to Deb, I said, do you want another cup of tea? I said, because it's only like 20 past four. We're, well, we're doing brilliant here. I thought it was later than that. Anyway, we carried on going on and on and on. And then all of a sudden we looked at the clock again and it was still at 20 past four. And we realised the clock had stopped. And it wasn't 20 past four at all. It was 20 past six. We'd lost two hours because we didn't realise what the time was. So anyway, we came through um, and we had a cup of tea and etc. And then we went back through to do the, DVD, the, the, the uh, unboxings. And it's the first time, as you can see from the unboxings, just where we didn't know any of the characters. Well, of course, we've since found out and I've edited the video and I can include them now. But we didn't have a clue who they were. Didn't have a clue. Still don't know the names. And I've never seen the, the guy them before. But I tell you what, look freaky, especially the clown. Ooh. That was one my friend uh, Sarah wouldn't like because she hates clowns. And dolls, she's not like them either. Um, so yeah, so that, that was that. Then we had a Tesco delivery expecting, because we'd ordered a load because we wanted Christmas stuff in, we, we thought, oh, there'll probably be 10 or 11 items missing. There was only one item missing and one item that to be changed. And all it was was I'd ordered a uh, 300 gram block of Wensleydale and cranberry cheese. And they only had a 200 gram block, which they sent me. Great, no problem. I didn't mind that. And the only thing they missed out was some um, uh, sugar-free sweets for Deb. So we weren't too bad about that. Anyway, Deb started unpacking, scanning. I did the ticking off of the list. And we came across a couple of the items. And uh, when we got near the end, there was the sour cream, which Deb's bought for over Christmas. The only trouble is it's got tomorrow's date on it got tomorrow's use by date on it so i've got in touch with them i'm waiting for them get back to me because obviously that's not it's not acceptable for a date on sour cream be tomorrow i mean bear in mind we didn't get the delivery till half past eight tonight so we've only got 24 hours really to use it and we don't really need it yet we you know we don't need it for about a week or so so a bit bizarre that um yeah uh, i figured out by the way you know i told you that i was getting really really bad nausea well, about three or four weeks ago, I decided to come off my Actibal. Now, I thought they were just yogurts and they weren't really doing that much for me. So I went off, come off the Actibal and I started having normal yogurt for my breakfast. And it seems to be that since the Actibal's come out of my system, I've started getting problems with me nausea again. And I realised that obviously Actimal contains something which is good for your stomach. You know, it's basically good for your digestive system and, and, your, and your complaints, your stomach disorders. So... Um, I've put some more of them in the order and hopefully they'll be delivered tomorrow because we've got another delivery coming tomorrow between one and two. Now, you remember me telling you how I was raving about Tesco and the prices and everything the other day. When we got the delivery today, normally you get about 14 or 15 carrier bags and you have to spend ages unpacking them, unpacking them, unpacking them. But what they do now, which is very clever, is they put them in oversized bags. So instead of having like uh, 14, 15 carrier bags, you've got four really large 
uh, big, really large container, but the plastic bags, and and they hold a lot of stuff. Now them are a lot easier because you've only got literally get rid of four items after you've finished, not 14 carrier bags full of stuff. So they were a godsend as well. So that's another thing that they've done right. It's amazing, really. Now, coming up, I have come across some products in the last few days which have had dead cool flavours. Now, I like fridge raiders. I love my fridge raiders. Um, I always get them. Southern fried, lovely. Barbecue, lovely. Anyway, they bought out a limited edition, as you can see from this picture, chicken and stuffing flavour. And I've tried them tonight, actually, because I wanted to see what they tasted like. And they're delicious. And they actually do taste like chicken and stuffing. Like a chicken and stuffing sandwich, to be honest. That's what it tasted like to me. And I loved them. And the dog wanted one, so she had one, and then another one. So I did get some out of them. But yeah, we, we sort of shared them, if you like. Uh, but yeah, so if you get a chance, try them. Fridge Raiders, chicken and stuffing flavoured. Now, the other thing I came across, well, I didn't come across it, actually. Uh, my sister did first. I didn't realise. But I went on Tesco the other day. You remember me telling you that when I was on there doing the shopping, I came across sausage roll flavoured crisps, which I thought was bizarre. Anyway, and my sister, when I spoke to Paula, she knew about them. And she said she'd actually had some. Um, and the, she can't describe the taste. She said the taste is something you would have to try yourself. So she's, sending, she's coming down tomorrow because um, she's bringing down... My mum's ashes because we're putting them in a in a special designed urn thing that we're putting uh, on the uh, table in the front room so that then my mum's with us at Christmas you see um, so she's coming down tomorrow and she's bringing me a bag of these crisps to try so I'll I'll give you I'll give you a heads up tomorrow night when I have a taste of them and I'll let you know what they actually taste like because she just couldn't describe them she said I cannot tell you what they actually taste like and I thought well, that's a bit bizarre you know a bit strange that but. It's one of them things, you know, where you suddenly think, how many different flavours can they come up with? You know, I've got a bag of crisps coming tomorrow, another one that I'll actually show you a picture of tomorrow when I get them. And they are bacon and cheese flavoured puffs. Well, Paula loved the sound of them. My sister loved the sound of them. So I'm going to sort of swap a bag of ours for a bag of hers. So she gets to try the bacon and cheese puffs because there's six in a bag, there's six packets in a bag, like, and I get to try... The sausage roll flavoured Walker's crisps, which I can't even imagine what they taste like. Because sausage roll is sausage roll, surely. I don't know you can get crisps tasting like it. So, yeah, it's been it's been a strange day today. There hasn't been a lot that's made me smile, I must admit. Um, and I really do feel for me, me cousins because I can honestly say I know what they're going through. Because, like I said, I lost my mum in August. And... Uh, we're talking four months now, and I still haven't got accepted it. I still can't. I still can't get my head around it. It just doesn't compute at all. I still won't pick the phone up and give her a ring every time something good happens in this house. I always say to Deb, "Oh, I'll let me mum," and I have to keep biting my tongue and saying, mm, "I can't let me mum know. I can't give her a ring. I can't invite her down for a cup of tea or go ask if we can go up there and, and uh, I can install her some more hidden object games on a computer." You know that part of my life's gone now, but I can't accept it. I just can't accept it. It is very, very difficult to accept when you've been so close to someone for so long. And that's why I wrote this poem. Uh, because I know that some members of my family were really, really, really very close to me, Auntie Marge. Especially my Auntie Yvonne. They literally spoke every night. And she's known her since she was 15 years old. So bear in mind, my Auntie Marge was 76. So my Auntie Yvonne's known her a very, very long time. And, and like I say, she was a best friend and um, she's having a bit of a job at the moment. So, you know, my thoughts also go out to me Auntie Yvonne as well. But for our Rose, Terry and Stephen, you know, it, it's going to hit them. It'll hit them and it has hit them massively hard. All the plans and all the things that they might have thought they were going to do in the next few years with the mum, you know, planning this, planning that. It all goes out the window. I mean, my mum has been on about going on a cruise for 50 years, since 1960, yeah, 1960, 60-something, that she, she first saw Carry On Cruising, and she wanted to go on a cruise, and uh, she'd always had reasons not to go, not enough money, us kids, commitments, and then this year, we actually persuaded her to go next year, she was due to go next April, May, she was going to go on a cruise, she was going to go on a Mediterranean cruise, and de basically fulfil the dream of a lifetime. And, you know, all this and all those years she waited. And when she did have the chance that she could have gone next year, 
fate comes along and just takes it all. And you're kind of like, what the hell was the point? You know, and um, that's what that's what they'll be thinking, you know, that that is how they'll feel. They'll feel hollow, completely hollow. And every single thing they see will remind it, because you can't not do it. We're putting decorations up and we'll pull something out of one of the Christmas bags and it's either something my mum's gave me, something my mum's commented on, or something that, you know, has got some connection to my mum. You'd be surprised how many things around your house and how many things, you know, that you've got in cupboards and stuff are connected to somebody else. And it's when you start looking at those things that the memories come flooding back. And um, that's all you have then, and you see memories. Uh, and you have to hold on to them. You have to cherish them. And that's what I do about my mum. You know, we, we, we uh, make some comment about my mum almost every day. She's sitting in the living room at the moment, her picture's sitting on our mantelpiece, uh, uh, you know, surrounded by Christmas decorations, how she would have loved it, you know, because she loved Christmas. She didn't do a flat out as much as a lot of people do, because, as she said, she wasn't there on Christmas Day anyway, because she always went to my sister's house and had a meal there, and then my sister packed her up with a load of food, because she always wanted to go back in the afternoon, my mum did, she never wanted to stay for the evening, she was too tired. So she'd go back her house, take a load of food, and then that would keep her going for like Boxing Day, day after, day after that. You know, she'd, she'd be walling. And my sister's going to find it very, very, very hard this year. She really is. And I am as well, because the first thing on Christmas morning, I used to ring my mum before she went, my sister, so I could have a talk with her and wish her Merry Christmas before she went to the madhouse, as she called it. Because it was always loud, it was always noisy, it was always full of kids, you know. And, and my mum sort of, even though... She kept saying to me, oh, it's too noisy, it's too noisy. She'd still go back every year. If you, Even if it, we gave her the chance to come here one time and we said, look, why don't you come here? Because it's nice and quiet. There's only me and Deb. And she still said, no, 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 I'll go Paula's, I'll go Paula's. I don't want to let Paula down. And Paula had said, you know, it doesn't matter, Mum, if one year you don't want to come here, you don't have to worry about it, but she wouldn't do it. I think secretly she liked the noise. She liked the mayhem because she knew it was part of Christmas. You know, that's what Christmas is about, enjoying yourself, having fun. I know Deb wasn't too sure this year whether she really wanted to celebrate Christmas or not. And I said, look, at the end of the day, mate, I'm making sure to celebrate Christmas this year because nobody knows if you're guaranteed the chance to do another one. Because I don't know what's going to happen. I can't say that I'm still going to be here next Christmas. I don't have a clue. Nobody does. So really, it's a case of having to, you know, just take each day instead of planning 6 12 18 months ahead just put, live each day don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today you know just just enjoy your life do what you need to do do what you want to do if it upsets some people because you want to enjoy yourself as long as it's not against the law you know then you, you're fine you're fine anyway coming up is this poem and it's basically just called auntie marjorie um I hope you enjoy it. I know you don't know the woman, but it's basically, it's a tribute poem. So here is the poem, and it's just called Auntie Marge, because, uh, well, Marjorie Pinches, I called it because that was her name, but to me, she was just my Auntie Marge. Rest high with the angels, you're with your husband once more. There's no more pain for you, no longer knocking on heaven's door. You take your place among your family, those that have paved the way. A candle that burned so bright, sadly was extinguished today. You leave behind your children, those that made you proud in life. Your grandchildren will always miss you, mother, grandmother and wife. You were the light that lit their darkness, you were the sun that shone all day. Time has played its cruelest trick, it's gone and taken you away. Though you are gone in body, your spirit will never fade. Your place in your family, the path through life you made. We will keep you in our hearts. We will walk that extra mile. We know that when it's our turn to join you, you will welcome us and smile. And uh, like I said, I wrote that for me, Auntie, who sadly passed away this morning. R.I.P. Auntie Marge. Now I have got something to show you. You remember the jigsaw that was on there and it's now gone? That's because I completed it. It was 1,500 pieces, as you can see from this, uh, these two pictures, what I'm going to show you right now. 1,500 pieces, Jan van Hasteren, 
and it was Highland Games. And trust me, it was as hard as it looked. But I actually finished it at midnight last night. Yep, so there you go. That was my jigsaw done. Now, I am going to be doing the Waddington's Christmas jigsaw, but I'm not doing it tomorrow because we've got some work to do on the uh, units above. And we need the table spare so I can put stuff on there. But there is a Waddington's Christmas jigsaw on the way. Oh, a quick aside, actually, just very, very quickly for Stephen Cook. I'm awaiting on two, two Z boxes, Novembers and Decembers. And I still haven't heard anything about my coin advent calendar, even though we're now on the 7th of December. So somebody somewhere is going to get a major rollicking in the new year. Trust me, because I paid for an advent calendar for advent. You don't expect it not to be here by the 7th of December, do you really? Ugh. Anyway, on that note, I will love you all and leave you all. I hope you've enjoyed my vlogmas and I hope tomorrow um, it's a bit more... Uh, cheerful and light-hearted. I will try and make it. Oh, I do apologise again. I know I did, didn't do me day five, me top five films, but after this morning, I just wasn't in the mood to sit there and go through me films to work out which five were going to be in my top list. I hope you understand. And um, willing, willing, I will get it done tomorrow. Um, I'm sorry I keep letting you down, all me people who are waiting for this top five Christmas films. I will get there. I promise you. Thanks for bearing with me. You all take care. And I'll do another vlog tomorrow.